<laughs> Check it out, guys. This here is our newest robot. This here is the XGO Mini 2. Now, this here is a quadruped robot, essentially a four-legged robot. That means like a dog or a cat. Now, if you're not familiar with the channel, we review a lot of products on here from robots to even an Iron Man suit. We do it all. So if you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and of course subscribe for more in the future. Now today we'll be seeing the XGO Mini 2, essentially the upgraded version of the original XGO Mini. This features a robotic claw, as well as a new screen and other features which we'll be looking at as well. Now this thing is powered by Raspberry Pi, so it's essentially a supercomputer with a built-in AI system, so you can go ahead and use it for just about anything. Now today we'll be seeing exactly what it's all about, so if you guys wanted your own, check out the link down in the description. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so check it out. This here is the original XGO Mini that we reviewed. Now, I am a particularly a big fan of this robot and I really didn't think that it needed any kind of improvement, but the fact that they made one is actually pretty cool. Now, uh, it does come with all the bells and whistles, minus the claw of course, but there were some flaws that I really didn't notice until later on. Now, do note that this is technically a prototype, so I'm assuming that was the issue, but when I didn't use it over a period of time, the battery itself drained and then this required us to go ahead and replace the whole entire CPU uh, in which they actually sent to us and explained us how to go and do it. It was a pretty simple concept, but the fact that I had to do that was a bit of a concern. Now, although this is a prototype, I'm assuming the final version did not have that issue, but otherwise, I would say it was a great robot. The only other issue I had was the display purpose. So right now, I'm kind of holding it up with uh, with a power block, but you can see that no matter what you do, it always kind of collapses on itself, and there's really no proper way to display this. I wish it did come with a stand, or I wish the servos were strong enough to kind of support itself. Either way, it'll just kind of fall down on itself like that. So it kind of gives you an idea what that's about. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what this new model is all about. So once again, uh, this here is a prototype, meaning I don't know if this is the official packaging, but it's still pretty cool. It came like in a little briefcase. Check it out and uh, let's see inside. All right. All right, so this here's everything that they gave us. Uh, obviously, we have our XGO Mini 2, and then uh, we have a charger. Looks like two cubes that they gave us, a red one and a green one, and it has color recognition, which is cool, and a ball that it actually can grab or follow based on what you're trying to do. So uh, let's go ahead and put these two side by side and take a quick look at it compared to the original. All right, so size-wise, the new XGO Mini 2 is actually a little bit more condensed. Uh, the frames on the arms and the legs are actually smaller on the newer model, uh, and even the frame itself in the middle, it's significantly thinner. Now, you do have a bigger screen here on the newer one, and then of course you do have the gripper on the top, which this one doesn't have. And yeah, in terms of weight-wise goes, it's actually, it feels a little bit heavier. That's probably because of the claw. Now, I noticed that it's actually supporting itself right there, so if I actually extend the legs, can it stand on its own? That would be actually a really cool display factor, and it does! So that is great. One of the biggest pet peeves of mine, uh, unfortunately, I have to say, is that it just likes to keep collapsing on itself. So that is a great improvement, and I'm really happy to see that. So you can go ahead and display this and show it off and showcase it based off of that. Now, uh, aside that, let's go ahead and boot this thing up next and turn it on. So there's a power button here on the top. Simply press that once. Uh, it'll indicate a blue LED, and it'll gradually stand up and rise uh, and then the screen on the front here will start booting up and then the arm will go down and then from there you can actually control the robot using the menu. Now on the front here you have a few different buttons so on the top left and the top right are movement buttons so you can move left and right and on the bottom right is a select and the bottom left is a back button. Now there's three different modes off the back you have program, RC, and try demo. Now you can control it as an RC using an app which will do and then on the right you have try demo and then program you can control it using a computer. So I'm going to click try demo and this will bring us to an example menu or essentially pre-installed apps. Now these have a variety of different skills that this robot can do. So we have a show, uh, mask, hand gesture, uh, gripper gesture, uh, gender gesture, it can do traffic, emotions, it can do speech, it can do a line, colors, sounds, height, 
in YOLO. <laughs> YOLO? Um, so yeah, I mean, that is actually pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm just gonna kind of jump right into each one and showcase it to you because that is the whole point of this video is to display exactly what this robot can do and kind of give you an idea. So this here is gonna be our show, essentially like a show and display, uh, giving an example of what this robot has the capability of doing. So let's go ahead and select that. And you can see that there is a display here on the front. Again, they're kind of going more after the cutesy version of a robot. Although I have to say, this robot is nothing but intimidating to look at. <laughs> but look at it move. That is pretty cool. So right now it's doing a little circular motion there. Uh, a little prance. Doing some push-ups. It's kind of moving left and right. Oh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's using the bathroom right there. Okay, it's just. <laughs> So I gotta say that they should really own the fact that this thing is intimidating looking. And trying to make it look cute at the same time is a little bit creepy. But I mean, I guess it works. It's, it's a song about puppy dogs and the dog is technically doing different dog motions. Oh, look at the little wave. There you go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end that. So yeah, that was our show display. Now, uh, I, I'm not really a big fan of the song choice that they use, mainly because of the fact that it's not a cute dog. It's actually an intimidating robot. I, I get what you guys are going for, but maybe you should try a different approach. Moving on. Uh, so we have other things in here. So we have a mask, okay. So if I click on mask, let's see what this does. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's actually, it's, it's putting a face on me. So it's actually got a way of tracking my face. Absolutely incredible. And that is actually crazy to think about that. It has a camera on there with the capability to do tracking like that. That is so cool. All right, now the next thing we'll look at is hands. So hands is essentially like a gesture control. So if I put my hand here, oh, I could do good, so that's thumbs up. So on the screen actually shows the thumb, that's kind of cool. Five, okay, two, one, three. The fact that it's able to see this is absolutely crazy, four, so it can detect hand gestures and you can program based off of that for actions. All right, so the next thing is called teach. Now teach is cool because what it does is it creates a puppet. So A is right here, once you press this, it'll record the motions. Uh, this is to end it. This one here will be execute and this one here will be quit. So I'm gonna press A to record and this is gonna loosen up the servos from my understanding. So I can go ahead and maneuver it like this. Okay, action one and then hit next. Now it's action two. So if I want, I can bring it down like that. There we go. Action three, let's bring it back up. Action four, bring it down. Action five, open up the claw. Or no, close the claw, let's do that. And, and action. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit execute. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So just like that, we executed our own action. So that is a cool thing about teaching is that you can create custom animations without having to program or learn anything beyond that. Obviously you can do that with C++ and Python coding, stuff like that, but that is actually cool on how they do that. So I'm gonna click on done and then I'll go back to the main menu. So this here is segments. So segment, mask out the background. And this is, again, just kind of showcasing what this robot can see. So show you right there, you can see how it's kind of masking me out there and my backdrop is completely gone. So that is cool that it can actually do that where it can mask out the background and uh, this will help in terms of being able to learn and uh, program it for different things, such as if you want to showcase a ball, stuff like that. So again, gives you a little mindset of 
of what this robot is able to see. Moving on, I'm gonna exit out of here and I'm gonna click on grip. Now grip is essentially what it sounds like. So this allows the robot to see the ball. So there we are. There we go. So just like that, it was able to grip the ball and then I'll go ahead and release it. All right, so I'm gonna show them the ball. So, I mean, it's a little off, but it does make sense um, if it can actually work properly, but that is cool, that has the capability to grip. Next thing we'll look at is called face track. So face track is exactly what it sounds like, it tracks a face. That's so cool. So I'll move and I'll follow my face based on those dots. So pretty quick, crazy stuff. The next thing we're gonna look at is called pose. So if I select pose right here, it actually can see me as a body and essentially trace that as a figure. So it kind of gives you an idea what you can use that in terms of creating your own program based on different kind of motions. Now the next thing we'll look at is called QR code. Now QR code works based off of programming. So you can go ahead and create a program and assign a QR code to it. And then when you show it a robot that, it'll perform that action based off of that. Each last sex. So this thing's actually gonna essentially use its own AI system to determine what age you are as well as what gender you are. All right, so let's see if it sees me. There we are. What was that? <laughs> All right, I'm not sure what it's doing, but it does show my age right there. Yeah, male between 28 and 32. I'll take that as a compliment. So it is able to determine based off of that, and that's kind of cool. I'm not exactly sure what the barking was about, but that's kind of interesting as well. Uh, next thing we have is traffic. All right, so traffic looks like it's kind of using some kind of algorithm to calculate if there's like a moving object from what it looks like, as if there's like a vehicle, which I guess kind of makes sense based on traffic. You can set this up near a road and kind of see how many cars come by and use that in terms of calculations to create different programs. Uh, we have emotion. So this will determine if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're angry. All right, so it's using a software to determine if I'm smiling. Smile. Happy. <laughs> so yeah, it actually, it actually did detect it. So that's kind of cool. Oh. <laughs> and it actually does like a little happy emotion. That's pretty cute. All right, angry. Mm. No, sad. Okay, we got sad. All right. Oh, and now the now our robot is sad. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's definitely interesting and unique, I would say. I love the fact that it does have its own uh, reaction system based into it. So if it does determine that, you know, the person is happy, it'll create a happy animation, kind of correlating with what it's sensing. Now, moving on to the second menu, we have ball. All right, so ball is gonna look for the ball, which is right over here. Okay, see the ball? There we go, there we go. It's exactly what it's supposed to do. So it's kind of tracking or following the ball. So you can see that it can track based off the ball. Next thing we have is speech. Let's try this. Go forward. Go forward. All right, so it does have its own algorithm to essentially use voice recognition to create a command. Unfortunately, this one doesn't seem to be working. Again, it might be just because it's a prototype, but the final version should have that capability. Moving on, we have line, so line tracing capability. So this robot can actually follow a line. Uh, then we have colors, so this has a capability to recognize different colors. All right, so this is just tracking right now, so it's tracking the green cube right now. I guess put it down, just like that. And if I hit left again, this will go to, uh, if I hit right, it'll go to blue tracking, yellow, red. So here's red. So kind of show you how that works. So it does have its own color recognition and it'll actually follow that based off of that. Next we have sound. Oh, this is cool. This is a great display of its movements. Got a nice loud speaker in there. You can see the robot kind of flexing, the arm coming out, and then like, that is absolutely crazy. And then, whoa, whoa, it literally retracted it back so fast. That is absolutely mind blowing how fast this thing is. Especially for the micro servos that it has, that's absolutely crazy. And you can see how smooth the movements are. It's very fluid-like. 
Now, the interesting thing is on the front screen actually shows you some audio levels there, so it can actually measure that too. I don't know if you guys see that, but look at that. That is so cool. Definitely a very cool looking robot. Show you guys in slow motion, watch this. Watch the, watch the cold paper. Oh! <laughs> All right, let's exit out of that. Now it has a uh, recognition. So I can record myself here um, and train it for that. So for instance, you see right here, it says A to record, B to train, C to quit, and D to recognize. So training done. Oh, look, it's, it says number one. So it has assigned a value to me as it recognizes who I am and uh, just messes with and I move the camera from the screen. But yes, check it out. <laughs> so that's cool that it's able to do that. Now you could technically uh, program it to perform an action after it recognizes you, like greet you or say something. So that's actually pretty cool and what you can do with this in terms of that aspect goes. And then we have height. So height showcases obviously the height of the robot. So we just, I believe do a pinch like this and if I make it wider, he'll stand up. If I bring it down, he'll come back down. Okay, so what I do is I make a pinch and I make it bigger. And then the robot will get up and then I bring it back down together. So it uses that uh, measurement, essentially a pinch, to bring it up and down. And then this one here is called YOLO. If there's objects in the background, it'll also recognize that too. That It thinks it's a monitor right over there. That is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and exit out of the menu and we're going to RC mode. Now RC mode lets us connect to it via our app. So this will give me a few different things. So I have performance mode, radio control mode, and motor coordination mode. To kind of jump into radio control mode, now I can move the robot like this forward. I can move it backwards. I can have it turn to the left, turn to the right, and then I can have it rotate as well. Now I can adjust the height of the robot that's low and I can bring it all the way up as well. Now I can change the speed and I can change a variety of different things in there. Now under advanced, you can see how it kind of moves about like here. So just a little bit of different gesture. You have pry mode, which kind of keeps the rotational aspect of it goes, kind of like pivoting to one side, kind of going forward, back. And you can see like even how it moves, it will actually move it very, very slowly. And that's actually really cool. So that is our radio control mode. Now, if I click on performance mode, this here are different variations of animations. For instance, um, I can do lie down. I can do stand up. I can make it do a crawl. I can make it turn around. I can mark the time. And then I can do squat. I can do turn roll. So it's kind of like turning its body left and right. Turn pitch, turn yaw, three axis. So different rotationals. And then this here is P, which is uh, supposed to be a funny pose, but you can see right there what's happening. <laughs> uh, I have sit down, uh, I have stretch. So doing a little, little stretch there, kind of stretching his arm right there. I have a wave hand. There we are. Wave body. I have a swing. Pray. Seek. And then handshake. So you can shake the hand just like that. <laughs> All right, so that is that in terms of performance mode. Now there's motor coordination mode. So this here lets you essentially adjust uh, or uh, fine tune your robot if you need to. So that is our app in a nutshell. Now obviously this doesn't have the gripper in here but I'm assuming in the future they'll include that into the app and give you control over it like that. So there you guys have it. So this here is our XGO Mini. So now if you guys have any questions about it, comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Take care now, bye-bye.